good afternoon all on behalf of iot academy we welcome you all for the first session of national level faculty refresher program on quality teaching and strategies in hgis let me introduce the resource person of today's session dr sandilyan ramanujam dr sandilyan ramanujam is currently working as professor and dean tourism and hospitality cv raman global university odisha he is a hospitality and tourism professional with, with industrial and academic experience he has spent over 25 years in various sectors of hospitality and tourism and worked with some of the leading organizations in the hospitality industry both in india and abroad an alumnus of the prestigious institute of hotel management kolkata he began his journey with the taj group of hotels dr sandilyan has also completed four courses of executive education by ehl hospitality business school and is certified by ehl as a qualified learning facilitator he has to his credit establishing synergy kitchens and hospitality limited and developing new products for a chain of cafes that operated on a chefless model he has numerous consultancy projects and has also published numerous papers in national and international journals we welcome you sir and with this we hand over the session to dr sandilyan sir please thank you very much i hope uh, i am audible to all yes sir yeah uh, madam you can uh, start sharing my presentation Is yeah. It visible, sir? Yeah, that's the one, and uh, I'll keep indicating when I want you to move the slide. So, uh, sure, sir. Sure. So, good afternoon to all of you. A very warm welcome to this session. And uh, I am initially I am very happy that uh, I have been invited to take this session. I give a big thanks to the IOT Academy. and i welcome all the participants let's uh, hope this will be a good interactive session where you know we exchange some ideas and uh, learn from each other so can you move on ma'am second slide see when i talk about teaching or learning the first thing which comes to mind is it's a very old phrase you know this has been mentioned by confucius or even it's a chinese proverb but what exactly it means is we do not retain a lot of what we hear we retain more when we see and we retain the best when we do things so the objective of this session it is mainly to refresh our ideas of the teaching learning process i am sure each and every one of you is involved in the teaching learning process in some way or the other and you all have some ideas already and uh, currently this is a generation where you know we have information at fingertips so i am sure some ideas each one is having so what i would be like likely to do here is help you to refresh some ideas maybe you know trigger some memories which you have uh, got in your mind but I have forgotten over a period of time we'll also look at some of the science behind various practices that we are uh, looking at in today's world the idea is to improve the classroom experience for both ourselves as well as our learners madam the next slide please yes so here you can see uh, i uh, want to put a question here is uh, anybody aware of what is indicated in this slide Uh, what is it that all teachers want to achieve can someone put their ideas in the chat box what exactly is indicated here i'm waiting for few responses uh i think uh, we are going short of time yes interactive classes somebody has mentioned excellent 
The idea here is what all teachers uh, exactly. Shalini has mentioned sharing knowledge. I would uh, put it in a little different term. I would say that knowledge transfer. Okay. All the teachers want to achieve is transfer of knowledge which they have to the students. Yes, we also uh, share knowledge from our students. That is true. But this picture is more rem uh, representative of knowledge sharing. The light here is indicative that we want to ignite the light of knowledge which we have into our students. Next slide, please. Yeah. So once we are a little refreshed with the ideas of the teaching learning process, what we will be able to achieve would be possibly like we would have more participative classrooms. We could have improved or better learning outcomes there because uh, we are able to do a better knowledge transfer. We would be able to engage the learners better and interact with them. Knowledge creation and uh, self satisfaction is also some part of this. If you are teaching in certain levels where you can even create some new knowledge and your satisfaction comes from what you have achieved. So uh, before I move to the next slide, a simple question for again the participants who are here. What do you understand by teaching? What do you mean by teaching? Uh, any responses, please quickly. Anyone, please? What do you understand by teaching? I would prefer if anyone puts the response in the chat box rather than uh, speak up because uh, I am not able to hear it clearly. And uh, yeah, expression. Anyway, Madam, move on to the next slide. Teaching means to facilitate the needs of students. Excellent. Uh, very modern definition expressing what the students needed by Rita and uh, Shalini. Anyway, um, thank you very much for your uh, response, both of you. You can see here uh, in this slide what I have represented here. Teaching. It can be to educate. It can be educate in terms of knowledge or in terms of development of skills. Again, the idea is you know, it can help to coordinate and uh, improve the skill of a person or you know, give a different mindset, which is like the structure of the knowledge, skills and mindset framework. And ultimately, the purpose is you know, to help in decision making or you know, bring some uh, changes in the society or you know, come forward to take things up in the new way. Next slide, please, madam. Yeah. So here you see uh, this is a very interesting picture here because students and teachers interact. It's a two way interaction which has its uh, implement on the culture, on the different roles the students will take up. And there are lots of tools also available. Uh, in today's world, you know, you have a lot of uh, tools uh, especially related to ICT. But the main point is the largest circle of this uh, picture here you see is student engagement. That is the biggest challenge for any teacher. And uh, in today's world, it remains a very big challenge because you know the attention span of a student has gone down from somewhere around 15 seconds in the 90s and 2000s. Today it is around 8.25 seconds. Science says this. So it's very difficult to retain the attention of the students. So this is the point which I am going to talk more about in this presentation. Let's uh, move on, madam. Yeah. So the key points to note from the earlier slides, this is a short, sort of uh, a refresher for all we have already seen the objectives of this session. So what we are going to look at here is how we are going to engage the learners. If we are already doing it, how we are going to improve on that. How we are going to achieve knowledge, skills and transfer. And 
possibly if we achieve this it automatically leads to an improvement in the mindset of the learner because unless the learner's mindset is improved the objective remains uh, unachieved okay so let us look at what are the challenges here which is not helping us or which is uh, you know causing a barrier for us to achieve our objectives i already spoke about the attention span it is very short nowadays now sustaining interest the sessions and the subject has to be such that students sustain interest over a period of 45 minutes to 1 hour depending on how long the session is in individual uh, classes and also you know you need to know your learners how well you know them and you know how well you can group them or categorize them makes a big difference if this is a small group it becomes easier if it is a large group so much more the difficulty and uh, in today's world a lot of online education has come into place which is also challenge because here many a times you don't know whether your learner is actually listening to you or you know he has just connected and uh, they are busy elsewhere with their uh, mobiles or other things you know it might be happening in this session also so i hope that uh, my uh, all my colleagues who are here i say colleagues because all of you are uh, teachers or the of the same fraternity i hope all of you are at least paying attention so madam can we move on next slide yeah so here you see this is the graph which shows the average attention span over a duration of 60 minutes for an average student again it can change but you see the attention uh, span increases the first 5 10 minutes and then it goes down drastically so this is what we need to stop if you want to have a better learning experience in the classroom you must stop this from happening so what are the things that we can do to stop it next slide ma'am yeah so here you see there is a break which is given in between so this has led to recovery of the attention span so again uh, ideally this is one interesting way of uh, you know engaging your students better in a classroom you can give them uh, i don't say you know you give more breaks because then you may say that you know how much break do we give in a 45 or 50 minute session no it's not exactly a break but you take time off and go off into some other tangent maybe give a story ask somebody to you know do some demo in the session a couple of minutes ice breaker in between so that the focus is back and everybody is back to the so if this can be done you can have a better retention over here <coughs> next slide please ma'am okay for the second point that is sustaining interest this is a bigger challenge uh, it requires a lot of involvement from the side of the teacher you need to be very passionate and honest in your uh, presentations and in your discussions you must believe in what you are saying if at all you know you speak to the students that in a way where your own faith is not sure then they will not ad adapt to those things <coughs> preparation and practice no amount of knowledge or you know uh, your uh, capability can replace this keep preparing and practicing even if the same session has been taken by you over 100 times you need to add on new facts and update yourself this has to be a continuous process keep learning and keep delivering the better the command over the subject you have the more confident you will be in the session and the better your delivery will be the better the student will be able to relate so these are some of the challenges which you need to work on yourself to you know bring into the classroom uh, can we move on ma'am next slide yeah so knowing your learners so uh, here i have put a picture of uh, four different uh, categories you know visual learners those who learn by seeing 
auditory learners, those who learn by hearing, read, write, someone who has to write down things, and kinesthetic learners, someone who learns by doing or who is involved in the process. Now, you yourself need to know what kind of learner you are. There are sites in Google which has some simple tests and which can help you to identify what kind of learner you are. If you have not yet done, I would suggest you try this game. It's a simple enough 10 minute exercise and you will be able to know what kind of learner you are. <coughs> Excuse me. You can also involve the students in these activities. It can also be part of your class itself. It will give that uh, small break in between and help you to understand the type of learner. Most of the students are a combination of this. Primarily maybe visual, but a little bit of kinesthetic and auditory. So once you understand your students, <coughs> you may be able to group them better and the knowledge transfer can be improved. Next slide, please, ma'am. Yeah. So now here you see this is a very interesting slide here where most of the classes we have or which traditionally we used to do is a lecture or reading or an audio visual or a demonstration <coughs> which are all passive learning methods active learning process where students are involved you see the discussion the practice by doing and the best result we get when students are involved in teaching other students <coughs> so if you see here, <coughs> this shows the average retention. 5% on a lecture, 10% by reading, 20% on audiovisual, and 30% on a demonstration. Whereas it's almost double when it's a discussion, tripled when it is by doing themselves. <coughs> and lastly, when students are involved in teaching others, you know, you see, it's 90% retention. <laughs> so we need to understand here what exactly we want to use. Are we still going to remain with the traditional systems or we want to go into the <laughs> active learning process? Next slide, man. So please see here. What happens when you focus on active learning? You engage the students better. You can give an emphasis on the higher learning uh, order of thinking levels in line with Bloom's taxonomy. I'm sure you all have uh, awareness of this. And you will get a classroom where involved and eager learners with a lot of energy and enthusiasm to share knowledge. So this is what will happen when you focus on active learning. Uh, let's go on, madam. Yeah. I have just given a slide here uh, with the basic inputs of Bloom's taxonomy. Mostly, you know, the questions or evaluations uh, we have in our uh, schools and colleges are limited to the lower order levels. We do not even ask the students to start applying their knowledge. So the student will be more engaged when we work on the higher order levels of create and evaluate. But if you are stuck to teaching where your classroom is more of understanding and remembering, then uh, the engagement of students will not be very meaningful. The students have to be taken up from the lower order levels to apply or analyze and eventually do the higher order thinking of evaluation and knowledge creation. So more the students work on these levels, they will be better engaged in the process. Can we move on, madam? Yeah. This is another slide where I'm talking about Howard Gardner's uh, theory of multiple intelligences. 
every human being has some skill or uh, ability you know and that is what he has spoken about here there are students who are naturalist who are musical who are kinesthetic who are logical mathematically interpersonal relationships are very strong this is what uh, in some phases we call as emotional intelligence intrapersonal who know themselves very well linguistic master of different languages spatial who identify spaces you know like uh, 3d dimensional figures and space they are very clear on those so again this is an elaboration of the know your learner theory here we are looking at a lot of different kinds of qualities which can be there in the learner and how you need to work on each of these qualities first you have to identify so uh, let's move on <clears throat> now i have come to some you know innovative teaching methods that we actually follow so i'll start off with the first one that's a role play so what is a role play <clears throat> you ask students to you know perform different roles if you are talking about a management team you can have someone be the marketing head you can have someone be the hr head and you know they can discuss about real life problems which they do in the classroom the facilitator will be there and guide the student and give his or her feedback so how does uh, doing a role play help the learning process <clears throat> students are actually involved it improves their interpersonal skills there is a decision making process so they get involved in it it's active learning <coughs> their communication skills are improved they start developing insights and uh, they start listening to other ideas and they start reflecting and resolutions happen based on interactions so this is a very <coughs> good way of engaging students in an active session <laughs> excuse me i have a severe cough so <clears throat> see the next one we are talking about mind mapping Now, what is mind mapping here you know you take some concept which has multiple facets for example i give you one health so what are the things related to health it can be good sleep it can be good food it can be proper diet habits exercise so there are lots of components to that so we just give the central concept and allow the students to you know engage in participating uh, manner where they each give their inputs it can be individual groups or it can be a larger group so when they <clears throat> do a mind map they are actively again engaged there is collaboration there is creativity new ideas come up productivity each uh, group gives up some results they have a scope to do an analysis there is a lot of planning involved before they present so once again this is a way of <coughs> delivering a very active session can we move on madam yeah so here you see there is an example of a mind map the central concept is space i just uh, give you a few seconds to look at it so if someone can uh, you know share if the central concept is space what are the things which lead to space you can put it on the chat box
Anyone? <clears throat> what are the points here? You see, you can see astronauts, stars, new information, known facts, planets, sun. Can you add any one or two points which are not a mission to moon? Excellent. Excellent. Anything else? Anyone else? Can you add something which is not there? Okay, exploring. <clears throat> Shalini has put exploring, yes. Uh, I am still uh, giving a few seconds here. So anyone else also wants to add a few more points can list down. See, so the entire cosmos is open for you to list down. So everything is space you can put black hole you can put comets you can put meteors you can put other galaxies <clears throat> yeah galaxy excellent so i think we'll move on madam <clears throat> the next kind of uh, innovative teaching method could be a field trip I am just holding a few seconds. Please go through the slide, read the points there. <coughs> you should have a field trip which is aligned with the curriculum. It should not be vague. Just like that, I want to take the students for a trip to a mall no if they are going there they should have some purpose and it should be communicated very clearly what is the goal and expectation you have to generate interest in the trip you have to establish questions which you ask want them to answer or find out and obviously you know what happens when you do a field trip like this it helps to break the routine. You get out of the same uh, system, you know, coming into a class and uh, teaching you, you go out. It can be to a nearby store, it can be to a mall, it can be to a destination, depends on the topic. It helps to build a team, you know, the students work together in a team. So yes, and the teaching is live. So you know, you have the products in front of you and you're explaining. So, you no, know, it has a different value altogether. <laughs> Most of the, you know, students would be very interested in this kind of activity because it suits to different kinds of learners, visual, kinesthetic, as well as redirect or the auditory learners. Can we move on, madam? Yes. The next slide here, again, I'll give you a few seconds to read. Here we are talking about gamification or game-based learning. Both are similar, though not the same. But games are usually very attractive to all the students or learners. So they are much more interested in playing games. And we use this as a method of teaching. But one has to exercise ample level of caution here. Should not get carried away with the game. You must have the concept what you want to teach very clear 
whether you are going to use a gamification process or a game based learning the difference is there it's subtle but it is there but remember at what time you want to start and when it has to end you should be the one in control the student if left without control will go on and on <coughs> so we have a lot of different interesting games there are uh, excellent books available on this also games for classrooms games trainers play games uh, more games for trainers so you can uh, check up some of these books select some uh, games which suits your class and try it out can we move on yeah so the next kind of uh, innovative method is uh, group discussion or work <clears throat> when i say group work it means you have to assign some work in a group the teacher has to be a little bit uh, you know sensitive when you make the group you select some of the fast learners and uh, some slow learners and club them together so that you know the group or the multiple groups if they are engaged in some tasks they work at a similar pace collectively it should not so happen that one group is over in 2 minutes and the other group is taking 2 hours so there the facilitator has a very strong role to play you must encourage everybody to participate and as a learner or a learning facilitator it's not just assigning the group and then you know you go off uh, please do this i'll be back in 15 minutes no you have to be present constantly monitor the performance and you know give subtle hints or inputs if you can do that there will be a remarkable learning experience because students will also be active they will be focused on the work and they will not get a chance to get distracted so the group discussion or work it helps in building up teams gives an option for the students to brainstorm you know different ideas coming from and uh, it gives a opportunity for leaders to develop there is a leadership area you know each group will spring up with a different leader depending on the subject and the topic helps to develop the communication skills the interpersonal skills and as well as the intrapersonal or personality development can happen for the student so group works and uh, group discussions have a lot of uh, impact can we move on madam yeah so here i have uh, some of the very common aspects shall we say of different kinds of uh, you know activities which you can uh, look at in a classroom it could be a quiz it could be a puzzle could be a debate it could be a crossword it could also be a poster making i have uh, just given few over here there are ample numbers more all these are different activities which help you to break free from the routine lecture or teaching board so you can also have a mix of all of these uh, different methods in your classes it is uh, yes someone has mentioned that yes we have used kahoot couple of times excellent the idea is not just using it you have to understand when to use and how to use if you use it correctly these are all tools if you just use it and uh, you know uh, after that you let it go then it loses its value when there is a quiz if the students are actively in fact 
you should leave it to them to in fact even uh, prepare for the quiz and they should develop in different groups they should develop the questions you should moderate only the answers uh you can ask students to try and uh, develop a crossword it seems very easy but it is a very challenging task i tell you i am uh, sharing this interesting uh, point here that one person spends an hour making a crossword and it comes in a newspaper so the next day some 25000 people would be engaged in solving the crossword who will spend an hour each so you know a one man spending one hour has engaged 25000 and more hours human hours in solving that crossword so that is the kind of power a crossword can have one student spending 2 hours preparing a crossword can engage the entire class for 6 hours 7 hours whatever you know so that is where you need to moderate these things very cautiously these advantages as well as uh, disadvantages so uh, can we move on ma'am okay today's world we come across this term very frequently a flipped classroom what exactly is a flipped classroom so in a traditional classroom you deliver the information and you give assignments here the information is delivered in the form of an assignment which is to be done offline or off the class hours the student listens to your uh, delivery on a video or a Uh, study material comes to the class and whatever assignments initially you were giving for them as homework that would be done in the class so we are just interchanging the roles so this is a very interesting way of teaching you can try it um with caution in different subjects the more you know you try and you see the response if the students are engaged and they are more focused on this method yes keep on adding because it a lot depends on the level of uh, the students also if the students are not of the level where they are able to adapt then this might be a uh, flop show completely so you must first encourage the students to come to the level and then uh, test out these methods can we move on madam this is uh, another aspect like very sim sim similar to group work this is a project based or a problem based learning method the problem or project can be an individual product project, project or a group project it can be simple it can be a complex one if it is individual it would be an individual submission if it is a collaborative one it should be a divided presentation and you know it should focus on what are the things that someone needs to know what are the driving force in the concepts must be clear what exactly you want to achieve through this what is the publicly presented product what are the modern skills that you are looking at to develop what are the scope for inquiry and innovation what is the student voice and choice or you know where are the things they need to voice their points and what are the choices they have and of course the feedback and the revision or the mentoring part so this can also help uh, if you can give some interesting projects for students which they are you know actively involved in then this can uh, be a good way of a uh, classroom session for the coming days uh, next ma'am okay currently case studies these are the best modern techniques for teaching um there is a lot of uh, you know talk about management schools which have developed cases so in india we are still uh, you know looking at case studies from a different perspective very few people really know how to write a case study and use it in a classroom you can uh, you know take a look i have uh, authored a book on uh, teaching case studies in hospitality and tourism it is available on amazon you can have a look it has got some 15 20 interesting case studies we are coming up with uh, another book 
which is going to have the second version of this uh, teaching case studies. The most important thing about the case study is, you know, you don't know what is the possible outcome or solution. So you have to be very cautious when you are handling case studies because students can be very creative and come out with some solutions which you have not thought of. You cannot simply back out and say that, oh, no, this is rubbish. You have to be prepared and you have to accept that that can be a way of creating knowledge. So your narrative must be strong. You must include real time problems which can be out of your experience or, you know, taken up from uh, some event or happening or it can be a field phase problem. It need not have a single solution. So you must encourage the students to discuss. Each one may come up with a different solution. What is important is we discuss, engage everybody. No solution is correct or wrong. But it must be aligned to the subject. You must very clearly indicate what you expect to teach by using this particular case. Your background research on the case must be evident in the narrative that is there. Your concept of the points that you want to inculcate in the student must be very clear. And finally, of course, you must have teaching notes so that when you share this, the student is very clear that what is the topic that was covered using this particular case and what he is supposed to learn. And you can give a very uh, honest feedback on different outcomes which students come up with. Can we move on, madam? Okay. We are now uh, nearing the end of the presentation. I will just, uh, you know, share some points which these are scientifically, uh, you know, acclaimed as the best teaching learning practice. So I am just sharing. It's a, a thing that you need to, um, you know, quickly uh, grasp and, you know, try and implement in your uh, sessions. So when you are teaching one on one, this is mostly when I am talking about practical sessions, you know, when you are teaching some practical uh, information to a subject, which is by practice. So here the concept is you break down the steps. Whatever the task, it has to be broken down in pieces. Demonstrate one step at a time, get the student to practice that step. Give him feedback, then allow the entire step to be practiced once, starting from beginning without a break, give a feedback and then evaluation. Very interestingly, you should remember that do not disturb the student when he is practicing unless he is making a grave mistake where he might physically injure himself or let them make the mistakes. Correct him after the process. The next part is one on many. When it's more like a theoretical session, like the one which we are having here. So when you give an introduction, you must put a win method. What is a win method? So what interest and need? This must be very clearly covered in your discussion. What are we going to learn today? What is the interest and what is the need? Uh, madam, can we go to the second slide of the presentation quickly? Second slide, not the next one, the slide number two. Yes. So uh, just for uh, everyone who is present here to understand that, you know, we must practice what we preach. So this was the first slide which says what we are going to do today. Our session objectives are very clearly defined here. What we are going to do in this next one hour of the session. The next slide, madam, number uh, three. Yeah, this is the need. I gave you the importance of this session. What is the interest here? The interest is we want to achieve this and how we achieve this. That is what we are going to learn. The next one. Here, yeah. this is the need for achieving that. So you can see, yeah, ma'am, we can go back to the original slide where we were around 27, I think. 
yes so you see i have also followed that scientific system of delivering the session so what we are going to do is clear what is the interest associated with this is also mentioned and what is the need for it you can divide the need into two groups one is a professional need one is a personal need because if you have a personal need students are more likely to be attracted to it so when you do a session you must give the brief and then immediately after the first 10 minutes you must involve the students in an activity if you note i had asked you all to give some response on the you know uh, chat box so those were the activities of course uh, due to certain restrictions we cannot go into an elaborate session but all the individual or groups must be actively involved and the facilitator must move around guiding them the grouping technique i already spoke about this you know you should group the fast and slow learners in a mix so that all groups perform at an average pace not somebody who is in a rocket speed and somebody who is you know stuck like a good strain or something like that okay there must be an explanation and presentation done with an evaluation and feedback what is not mentioned here is every such theoretical session you must give a proper handout to the student mentioning the inputs that was shared and maybe some suggested further readings or books so that they can go for further information on the subject uh, can we move on madam yeah now i come with uh, some tips for keeping your uh, classrooms very active personal your energy levels must be high if you come to the class you know yourself quite drowsy or um, lethargic do not expect the class to be energetic so you have to carry that energy inside the classroom don't be predictable when i say don't be predictable it's exactly that do not let the students out think you and plan for your class in advance if you have a practice of coming 10 minutes late to the session every day the third session onwards the student will also start coming in 9 minutes late because they'll expect you to come in only after 10 minutes of the session if you come and generally every day you have a routine practice they will be prepared for that so you must be as unpredictable as possible uh you must have different ideas different ways and uh, you know i leave it all of you are uh, experts in your own field and you understand what you need to do so you have to try different things and keep being very unpredictable do things differently don't do different things the same thing you do it slightly differently you know other teachers are also teaching the same subjects but sessions are not interesting you try to find how you can teach the same subject in a little different way which involves the students and keeps them engaged so be innovative and creative in your process involve the students if they are involved they won't have any boredom they won't be distracted they won't be texting messages to each other and so on have the students to come and lead different sessions let them take charge of sessions you can recede into the background but ensure that you are present and observing each and every movement in the class you should be in control of your class that is priority but beyond that it can be the learners who are you know engaging other learners if you remember when the student teaches others they retain 90% of what they teach or learn so that is what we are actually looking at to achieving can we move to the next slide ma'am this is the most important slide in this presentation your classroom must have a lot of humor if you have a jovial and friendly class it automatically becomes energized and people are happy to be there i am giving some examples here of bad classroom humor you must be very careful here whatever sense of humor or jokes that you bring in must be from your experience from 
you know it can be from abstract things also but it should be on a relevant point uh, don't just go into the class and you know start cracking jokes about uh, something that is not relevant in the class it has to be part and parcel of the session it can have an emotional impact it must you know adhere to the students uh, mindset they should be able to you know remember something and based on that the lesson will be remembered as i said it reinforces the lesson it creates a positive environment students enjoy they start appreciating i'll uh, give you a small example here uh, when i was in a management class where we were talking about uh, swot analysis you know strength weaknesses opportunities and threats so i started with an anecdote saying that you know my wife is my strength um my neighbor's wife is my weakness so immediately you know the class started uh, responding to this they laughed I went on to say that you know when uh, my neighbor is away it's an opportunity but when i have to go away it's a threat because my neighbor might also be thinking likewise so you know you should have some sense of humor in your classes bring this very naturally and uh, you know in a interesting way to the student do not target any student or a group or a community or uh, avoid political uh, thoughts in the classes do not be unnecessarily funny so if you can use humor nothing like that uh, next slide ma'am please i am again continuing be yourself as long as you are honest and passionate it will carry on to the student accept your limitations when i say this if you are come up with some question where you are not aware be confident to say that i don't know this i will check and get back to you do not give some crude uh, answers and i have seen some facilitators who you know get angry when they are asked questions say how dare you ask me this question don't you know this also that is not the right way at all in a classroom and nowadays the learners are too smart to understand your weakness learn from your students acknowledge their achievements and you know be thankful if they are sharing some good information with you keep updated continuous research because when we learned there was no internet no google today i am sorry to say what i am teaching you is already available somewhere or other on the google and uh, if someone has been uh, smart enough to study this they would have seen some of this information they could have questioned me also so i should be able to accept that i have a limitation you prepare for each session like it is your first session do not be in a rush do not be in a hurry that i need to get it over and you know i am uh, just waiting for completion so you need to be prepared for each session like it is the first one in that way you update your session also you upgrade yourself you update new information you add on from what you have learned in the last class and so on and uh, expect the unexpected when i say this i mean that you know it's always a possibility there are uh, some thing which you have not planned for and which happens students do come up with questions which are uh, very logical from their point of view but what you have never thought of this is uh, murphy's law you know whenever you want to do something be prepared because what has to go wrong will go wrong and if something goes wrong there is uh, no way you can stop it only thing is how much control you have over it is what will show whether your session is going to be a successful one whether people appreciate it or you know whether it is going to be leaving you in a negative position so these are generally some of the points which i find you know when i am talking about uh, teaching in higher educational institutions 
these are some of the innovative teaching methods which i have myself used and i find it is applicable uh, not just in uh, india but this is what the world is doing these days uh, i'll move on to my last slide and that is uh, with this you know i have come to the end of my presentation and i am happy to take uh, your questions if you have any so please feel free to you know take this opportunity and uh, share your questions the session is open for discussion now you can unmute and interact with the resource person or you can post your questions in the chat box also thank you sir thank you all yeah yes yes uh, i have seen some raised hands so you can either unmute and ask or you can post a question on the chat box please mukda and uh, yes uh, tools for teaching life science courses uh, mrs reshmi madam uh, i think see i wouldn't go into specific subjects you have to identify what is the best way of teaching for yourself because you know i can't know what exact resources you have what is the infrastructure available for you and what topic and how you want to convey but of course uh, if you wish you can connect with me separately i'll uh, share what best i can be based on better understanding of your requirements madam Uh, yes someone has mentioned what is good teaching uh there is uh, nothing like that as uh, good teaching these days the best answer to that is if your student manages to learn what you are trying to teach then it is the best teaching but you may have the best student who still doesn't understand what you are trying to teach and you may have some dumb students sometimes who understand things very easily so if the knowledge transfer happens successfully it is good teaching so the method you use has to depend on that any other questions any other queries nowadays it's tough to teach generation needed more attention why sir ah yes rita see the entire session today was about that only i mentioned no attention span has gone down from 15 or seconds to 8 seconds nowadays the reason is because you know how we human beings have created a lot of uh, distractions which are more easy for the student to adapt and they feel that you know the knowledge that we are teaching is very easily available in the internet so if you can actually engage the students by showing that your session contains a lot more than what they can get in the internet then they will be with you that is the ah uh, ponmani krishnan see if the students don't understand the teacher's communication yes it means the teacher has to improve his or her communication it is very clear because if you are in the profession and it is your job to ensure knowledge transfer and if the student is not able to understand you then you have to change your way of communicating or you have to you know help the student improve his communication level whichever way <coughs> yes is uh, any other query any other questions 
we still have time so uh, you can uh, feel free to you know put your questions <clears throat> i'll be happy to answer as best as i can how pmm ah uh, sorry sir i couldn't understand that question what is that how bmm mr parashuram can you elaborate your question please parashuram sir can you unmute and yeah you can ask me directly if you unmute and speak also i'll be okay Uh, in the meantime, uh, Chandrakala has put a question. With heavy syllabus and semester, how we improve skills and others? <laughs> Madam, that is a difficult challenge. You know, in India, the education, especially in the private sector, it is a big challenge. I can sympathize with you, but uh, I really don't have a solution for that. You have to be innovative. Innovative teaching method and solution. Please help yourself there. Any other questions? You can look at things in the syllabus which, uh, you know. When students learn best, the teacher's teaching is understood to be good. But learning does not mean scoring high in exams learning means having the knowledge here being able to apply the concepts that is being taught not scoring 95 percent in the exam i hope uh, pratibha tiwari this is uh, understood knowledge transfer does not mean student scoring 95 percent knowledge transfer means student understanding the concept and the subject he should be able to discuss and explain what you have taught not just write it off in the exam. I hope uh, that's clear. Online or offline? Obviously, for me, offline is the best way of education. Online is a system which was forced due to COVID. We are already back in many cases. We are doing uh, offline only. Online can also be for such uh, programs like this, you know, where uh, it's not feasible. And of course, it's much more cost effective when we do it online. Welcome. Thank you, Ms. Chandrakala. Yes, Mukda, if you have a question, please, uh, Dr. Rohit. My number I can share, but I think uh, the academy shall share with you, or should I share it? No, we will be sharing. Sir. Yeah, madam. So, yes, Pratibha, you can get my details from the academy, please. We will be sharing the PPT and the recorded sessions on the group. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Any other questions? There have been two, three people who have raised hands, but uh, no, doctor, sir, maybe my mistakes. Yeah, that might also have to be there too. I think there are no more questions from your side. Fine, ma'am. Yes, Mukda, you wanted to ask a question? Mukda, sir? Can you yeah, she has just mentioned hello. Uh, Mukda Kanekar, madam, did you have any question to ask? 
Austin chat box also. Yeah, Dr. Kuteshwarao. Yes, the PPT. What, what is the better method for teaching? Uh, madam, this again, uh, it totally depends on the students that you have and their ability or their level. Once you understand what kind of learner they are, you have to understand which is the best method for delivering to them. At the end, if they manage to learn what you are trying to teach, then your method is excellent. If not, keep changing the method. You can use a mix of all the different kinds, you know, audio, kinesthetic, um, read, write, as well as so visuals, so that you cater to different kinds of learners. Welcome. <clears throat> Rohit Kumar, sir, do you have any questions, sir? You have raised hand. Yes, I think uh, there are no more questions. Shall we wind up, sir? I think there are no more questions. So shall we wind up, sir? Yes, ma'am. I think we can wind up. I don't think anybody is uh, putting up any further questions. So thank you very much to all of you. Yes, Sachin, you want to say something? Very useful session, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. On behalf of IOT Academy, we thank Dr. Sandeep and Ramanujam for the informative, interactive, enriching, and enlightening session. We thank you once again for the amazing presentation, sir. We thank you for enhancing our knowledge with the commendable presentation. We thank you very much for your work, sir. And I thank all the participants for joining the session today. Kindly submit the feedback form using the link that has been posted in the chat box. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your efforts. It was an amazing session. Sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a nice time, all of you. Thank you, sir. You're welcome, sir.